What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm out here on the river and I'm in my trusty Old Town 106 Sportsman kayak. I have the trolling motor on high and we are trekking our way up here to the striper hole. Um, we have some pretty good weather conditions for fishing for these striper, it's overcast. It's kind of cold though. Um, we're hovering around the 32 degree mark and the forecast is calling for some freezing precipitation, whether that be freezing rain or snow, I don't really know. But hopefully we don't get locked up here. Hopefully we don't get stuck. Um, getting here wasn't that big of a deal this morning, but I could see if the temperatures continue to dip and we get some more frosty rain that it could be um, kind of tough to get back home because I am kind of far away. Um, but I'm hoping the striper bite and I've got some swim baits, some top waters, I've got some jigs, some spoons. We're gonna try to make it work. The striper usually bite pretty well when it's cloudy like this, but you know, I've been wrong before. But we're gonna make it up here. Hopefully we can catch the fish. Hope you guys are excited for today's episode. If you are, do me a huge favor. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and we'll catch you at the striper hole. There we go. Oh. There we go. First fish of the day on the swim bait. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Let's get it. Feels pretty good. Oh, I felt like a jar in my elbow whenever he bit it. Set the hook and I was like, crap, that hurt. How big is he? Pretty nice when you start the day. Not a monster monster, but a good one. Come here, big guy. Come here, big guy. There we go, there's the first one of the day. Not a bad one, about five pounds or so. Got him on the swim bait, let's get him off the hook. Nice one, nice one to start the day. So by far one of the most productive baits that I've used here to catch a striper is a white swim bait. So this is a six tenths divine swim bait. It's a 4.4 inch sized and the white color just stands out in the water, looks like a bait fish and they just smash it. And I've been throwing heavy jig heads. I've been throwing three quarter ounce to one ounce jig heads. This is a three quarter ounce, six inch to fine jig head. It's great because it has a screw lock keeper on there. These fish are vicious and it helps keep the plastic in place. And then as far as rod and reel goes, I've been using uh, primarily Shimano Corrado K. It's a beefy reel, spool up with 50 pound braided line. And then I'm using heavy powered rods. I'm swapping between um, the six cents divine, seven foot, eight inch heavy. And I've been throwing that seven, three inch heavy um, ESP series rod also. I've been throwing my top waters and my wider stuff on it. But I just saw a fish jump. Let's see if we can catch one on the swim bait. I think they're gonna smash it right here. There's a big ones right there. If we can reach them. Big ones right there. Go bait, go, 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 go. I'm a little left, that should be okay. Yep, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. it's a big one. Ho, ho, ho. That's a big one on the swim bait. On the swim bait, that's a good one. Feels pretty good. Ho, 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 ho. He's on the surface. <laughs> Man, that guy is running, that's so crazy. That's what's great about him, you know? When they come up school and if you land somewhere within 20 feet, there's gonna be some other ones hanging out near them and they're just gonna take advantage of this stray bait fish imitation and then just smack it. He's really, I don't think he's as big as I thought he was at first. He's just fighting like crazy. Oh, oh, he's a good one. He's a good one, he's a good one. On the swim bait. Come on. Let's get the net. Come here, big guy. I got it. I need a bigger net, guys. Woo. Check out that chunk right there. On the swim bait, oh, they're schooling again. Wow, that is just crazy to see them blowing up on surface. There's shad going everywhere. That is a really nice fish. Six and a half, seven pounds or so. Beautiful specimen. Got that swim bait choked. And that, my friends, is an Arkansas River workout. We'll send it back. Let's make another one real quick. Oh, wow. Okay, hold on a second, guys. There's some fish going off way the flip out there. I can't reach them with the swim bait, but I got this other bait here. Let's make kind of a one-two combo. I've got this big, heavy jigging spoon. Oh, they're right there. So I'm doing, when the fish are busting out of range, I'll grab this big jigging spoon, chunk it out there. Come on, eat it. There we go. Oh, he smoked it. Smoked it. Smoked it. Oh, gosh. That's what I'm talking about, guys. If I can't reach them with the swim bait, I grab this heavy, 
big old jigging spoon. This is an ounce and a half. I've had some one ounce and a half to two ounce jigging spoons, and I've just been chunking them out there and just kind of hopping them on the bottom. And I've been getting some really, really nice bites. It's a great follow-up bait. Like my swim bait is my primary bait. This is my fall. Oh man, this is a great follow-up bait. And then I also will throw a top water bait and we'll do some of that action here in a minute also. But right now we got this big old striper on this jigging spoon and I'm using a little bit lighter gear today. I brought this just spinning set up here. I feel like I'm in the ocean right now. Oh, I feel like I'm in the Cape Cod Canal actually. Oh, this is awesome. I love hearing that break go through the spinning reel. Oh, did he come off? That joker, that dirty dog came off. I got too hype. Fire that spoon back out there to him. I'm not seeing them jumping right now, but I'm sure there's some out there on the bottom. I just cast it out there, kind of let it go to the bottom. If they're like really schooling, then I'll just reel it. But when they're not, I just kind of hop it off the bottom. There he is. <laughs> they freaking smoke it. Oh. That's where the fish are at when they're not schooling. They are basically on the bottom. That feels like a little bit smaller fish. Might be even be, oh, I don't know. It feels a little bigger all of a sudden. Oh gosh. This is crazy. This is such a workout. I need a little bit beefier spinning rod, I think. Just so I have a little bit more of an upper hand on them, but we're okay. We're okay. We'll loosen our drag up a little bit. And as always, if you've been paying attention to the videos, we have this retainer wall with the cable and we got to try to keep the fish out of the cable. He's trying to go the other way. He feels mighty large. He got some big head shakes. I don't know what he's doing. When they start swimming the other way, they're usually big ones. He felt kind of small at first. I don't know. Let's see him. Oh, he's a nice one. Big old stripe, and there's one schooling right here in front of me. Oh, he's a big old guy. Oh, he's got that, oh my God, he's got that jig choke. He's bleeding. That is a huge striper. That is a huge striper. Oh my gosh. And unfortunately, he's got the thing choked down his throat. It's not good. Oh, that's huge. What a huge fish. This fish is huge. I got it. Oh, that's a huge fish on the spoon. Holy crap. Holy crap, guys. Hold on a second. I did not think he was that big. Oh my goodness, guys. This fish here is very very large unfortunately he choked that jig so far down that he got his gills kind of ripped a little bit so we're gonna have to keep this guy let's weigh him real quick though okay. let's get the official weight oh baby he's a big guy 12 pounds 12 ounces big old striper big old striper holy smokes that's so unfortunate that he choked that hook down there too far i hate that well that was an awesome catch on the spoon there's some fish jumping here by the bank so i'm gonna show you how they eat the top water bait. Hopefully we can catch one right here. They got some bait pushed up against the bank right here. They were busting. I think they'll probably eat it. I'm not sure. This is an Ema little stick. It's one of my favorite top waters ever. There we go. Here's a fish on top water. There we go. <laughs> Don't know how big he is. Stay out of the cable, boy. Oh, he's a big guy. Big guy. There's another nice fish. Crushed the little stick on top. I think it was our first topwater fish of the day. So we caught him on the spoon, caught him on the swim bait, and caught him on the topwater. Just a little three-way system. Slaying these striper. We'll send him back. Why don't you take a look at this bait here. Look at all of the chew marks on this thing. I've had this bait for probably four years, three years, and it has just been demolished by largemouth and striper. You can see it's just like literally worn into the bait right there. I have some heavy, these are three X hooks, I believe. Might be two X. Um, this one here is broken. <laughs> They've just been mangled. I need to put some new hooks on here. I really need to retire this bait. I'd be devastated if I lost it, but it just keeps getting bit, keeps catching fish, and we're gonna keep tossing it.
All right, well, honestly, the bite didn't last nearly as long as I anticipated this morning. They bit very well for the first hour, hour and a half that I was out here. I think I landed 10 or 15 nice sized stripers, including that really big one that unfortunately choked that spoon a little too hard. Um, but it was a good time. I think something that happened that caused me to not catch any fish was that I lost my one ounce jig head that I was using on my swim bait, and then I lost that big heavy spoon that I was casting really far out there to those fish that were um, busting near this other retainer wall. And as soon as I lost those baits, I really didn't catch a whole lot of fish afterwards. Um, but that's all right, it's kind of how it goes. I need to go to the tackle store, I need to get online, order me some more heavy jig heads, some heavy spoons, so that won't happen again. But I'm happy with the results. I've got that big fish on the stringer as well as a couple of others. I'm gonna take them home, get them cleaned up, and we're gonna have ourselves a really nice striper dinner. And I'm sure that Jay is gonna be very excited about that. I hate that she couldn't join me today. You know, like I said, it was really cold, it was freezing cold, and she just didn't wanna get out of bed this morning, and I do not blame her whatsoever. But uh, we're gonna keep trekking back to the boat ramp, get this thing loaded up, and I'll catch you guys once we get back to the house. All right, just made it back to the house, and as much as I hated having to keep this fish, I hate that he swallowed that hook, I would have much rather released this big striper. It was almost 13 pounds. We have big plans for this guy tonight. We are going to be making poor man's lobster. Don't know if you've heard that before, but basically we're gonna turn these striper chunks, or the striper fillets are turned into chunks that kind of resemble uh, the tail meat of a lobster. We're gonna dunk it in some butter, and it's gonna be epic. We made this um, last week, we didn't video it, but it was so good, and we were excited to share that recipe with y'all, and this is gonna be the perfect specimen for him. He's gonna have some big, meaty chunks. Jay, you excited for this guy? Oh yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but first, we gotta get him cleaned up, and this is gonna be plenty of meat for us, as you can obviously tell. He is a big guy. Look how big he is. Yeah, he's, he's a monster. I think that's the second biggest one I've caught this year. I caught one that was like just under 15 pounds. Um, off camera a few weeks ago, but that guy, I was not expecting that at the end of my line. But anyways, we're gonna clean him up, we're gonna fillet him. I've got the Bubba electric fillet knife. I've been using this knife for a while. I like it pretty well, it cleans stripe pretty good. So we're just gonna take the fillets off and then we're gonna chunk them up, throw them in there, and then we're gonna turn them into something. Just so delicious that you're just gonna have to try if you haven't done so already. Okay, so we'll start by taking the fillet off. All right, we'll just take the meat off the skin. <laughs> that is a slab. Holy smokes, guys. That is a huge... Of course, the ribs are still in there, and I kind of cut it really close to the skin. We'll flip it over. What we have to remove is that thin red meat layer up there, which is very easy to do. So let's take the ribs out, and let's get that red meat off. Ribs are out, and I'm just going to... We have a raised bed over there. I'm just going to throw that over there. The cats will get it, or it'll just provide some nutrients to our plants that are growing. Okay, so now let's focus on trying to get this red meat off. It's a very thin layer. So what I like to do is just run the knife really shallow and just peel that off. A lot of times I'm able to get it off in one go, but it's so massive I wasn't able to get it off. We have a little bit here, a little bit here. We'll get that all trimmed up and uh, this full will be ready, but still guys, look how massive that is. Holy smokes. And I think I'm honestly, guys, I'm just gonna put this in the bowl and I'm gonna trim it up inside, but that's basically half the filet right there. Put it in the bowl. And we'll cut this little red streak out. And there's the other half of that filet. It's so big. Okay, so that's basically how we clean all of our striper whenever we're filleting them. I'm gonna knock the other half of this fish out real quick and I will catch you guys back inside once we start the preparation process for this amazing poor man's lobster dish. All right, we're in the kitchen now. It's been a while since we cleaned our fish. We've had the fillets soaking in a bowl of salt water for the last five or six hours. And now we are getting those fillets ready to be turned into a poor man's lobster dish. Let me just show you guys what we're doing. Here we've got some of it already done. Uh, basically what I'm doing is I'm getting these big main fillets cubed up into pieces of meat, kind of like this right here. Um, these big chunks of meat, they hold together pretty well whenever you boil them. So that's what we're doing. We're gonna be boiling them like you would um, crab or crawfish or any other little seafood. Uh, so the cubes are great. So let me show you guys how that kind of looks. We're just kind of just cutting the fillet in a cross section like this and then just cutting it in half right here. Like I said, it's really thick, really meaty, and it's almost like kind of like a fish steak, really. So I'm just kind of getting it piled up here. I've got a bowl of water that is heating up. It's gonna get boiling and we're gonna be adding some seasonings to that. And then we're simply just gonna be throwing the fish into that bowl of boiling water. And it doesn't take long for the fish to cook, so it's really great. So once you get everything kind of set up, it's really fast after that. So let's finish getting this guy all cubed up 
And as you can see, we have a lot of fish meat. And this doesn't last long though. It goes really fast because it is just so good. We've got our shark meat all cubed up. It's looking really nice, just thick, meaty chunks. That's what you want um, when you're making this poor man's lobster dish. It's gonna be so great. But now we've got this done, it's time to season our water. And we're boiling them in. So basically, you're just gonna do what you would do with any sort of um, crab meat or lobster recipe. You're gonna have some crab boil. You don't need a whole lot of this because it's really concentrated. We're just gonna put like a tablespoon or so of that in there. And then we're gonna add some dry seasonings. We've got our Slappy Mama, of course, that's a staple. We also have the Hot Slappy Mama. We might add some of that too. We'll probably add the Hot Slappy Mama too. And then we'll just pour a little bit of salt in there too, just so it's just, just so it's tasty. And that's basically gonna be it. Once it's done cooking, we're just gonna melt some butter, dunk it in there, and it's just so good. All right, we've got our water boiling and we've got it seasoned well. I'm gonna add this little basket here. This is what we're gonna drop our striper meat into so it doesn't like flake and fall apart all over the place. Just easy to keep a track of. And uh, we're just gonna simply just dunk these bad boys in there. And with this water boiling hot, it's not gonna take a long time for these guys to cook. I think we have the water seasoned it pretty spicy, but if not, we just add some additional like sloppy mama dry seasoning on top of these bad boys once we get them out. All right, so that'd be round one right there. And uh, we'll let the water return to a boil. They'll boil for about, I don't know, three minutes or so, and they'll be ready to go. Yummy. Yummy. All right, so it's like round one of our fish is all the way cooked. Pull it up out of this basket, look at that. Oh my goodness, look at those big juicy flakes. Looks just like lobster tail meat. I'm telling yes. you guys, I'm telling you, it looks just like it. <laughs> and it tastes so much like it too. We're just gonna pour on this plate here. Hopefully it all goes on there. Oh gosh. Do it. Nice. Whew. Oh man. Look at that. I think that looks meat. good. Golly, it looks so good. And that's just round one. We got round two right here on the plate. It's not as much as that, but we're gonna get this thrown in there. Let's get the heat turned back up. Get these bad boys going. Have a big old pile of imitation lobster meat. <laughs> <laughs> and here you have it, guys. This is the finished product. This is fresh striper meat turned into a poor man's lobster dish. Doesn't look like anything super crazy, nothing super fancy. Just looks like boiled fish meat and a little thing of butter. But let me tell you guys, this is gonna be so delicious. I already know I'm not gonna waste any time on doing the initial taste test because it is hot, it is calling my name, and we need to get a dunk in this butter instantly. I'm gonna cut this a little bit smaller. Oh man, look at that. Yummy. Okay, we're going in for the dunk. Nice and seasoned up. Let's see how seasoned it really is. Here we go. <laughs> Oh my gosh, <laughs> there is no way that I can even really describe how this thing tastes except for it tastes just like lobster slash crab meat, but it's fish. It is so good. That is so stupid good. And this is like such a great like alternative way to get that dreamy crab meat lobster taste without breaking the bank. You know, I'd spend yeah. $50 on a box of crab legs. You can literally go to the river, catch you with striper and um, cook it just this way and you have yourself your very own homemade crab dish. Unreal, unreal. Jay, you gotta get in on this. Okay, I'm going in for the taste test. Whoops. You're gonna love it. Dipping it in the butter. I'm so excited. <laughs> Holy cow, oh my gosh. I told you it's dang good. That is fantastic. But you already knew it was gonna be good. We had this, you know, a week or so ago. But oh my gosh, we love lobster, we love crab meat, and you know, it's hard to come by, and it's expensive, and this is just a great alternative. Yeah. It's so good. <laughs> you gotta try this, guys. If you love crab meat, and you're interested, interested in trying this out, just follow the instructions that we had in the video, and you can have some of this. <laughs> you won't be sorry. Wow. Mm. Wow. <laughs> and that's some good, healthy omegas for mm. a little baby C. Mm. We normally have like potatoes and corn with it too. Yeah. This is honestly good enough. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to do the whole like uh, crab boil throw down thing like you said yeah. with the potatoes, corn, sausage, all that stuff mixed in, but. This, Look at me, I can't great. stop. Look at this. Can't stop. <laughs> Dang. Yeah, I don't 
think you made enough. <laughs> We'll see. Let's see how long this lasts. All right, so that is it. That is how you turn a striper into a poor man's lobster dish. There are a few other fish pieces that you can use to make this dish, but we've just found that striper makes the best poor man's lobster around. So next time you're in the river, you catch a striper or anywhere you catch a striper, and you don't know really how to cook it, definitely consider this as an option yes. because it is so great. Striper is a great fish to cook many different ways, but I think poor man's lobster is where it shines <laughs> the most. But guys, Perfect. while the fish is hot, we're gonna end this video here so we can enjoy the rest of this meat pile here. It's gonna be so good. We hope you guys enjoyed hanging out with us today in this video. If you did, do us a huge favor, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. We're, we're Colin J, and we'll see you on the next episode. Bye guys.